In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. It seems too obvious to say that the cross is at the center of our lives as Christians. If I were to say to you, you can't go home tonight till you found all the crosses in the church, you might be here pretty late. Just finding all the crosses on one of my pieces of vestments would take you a while. It seems too obvious to say, and yet how often we live our lives, even as Christians, not thinking about the cross. We think about it more often than we think. When we're worried, we often consciously not make the sign of the cross because we know that there's power in it. We heard that in the epistle, that, that the cross is the power of Christ. We call this feast, the exaltation, the lifting up of the precious and life-giving and powerful cross. So we know there's power in the cross. But there's another aspect I think we even less frequently think about, and it's going to sound so obvious again to seem silly. But if the cross is the center of our Christian lives, then the crucifixion is central to the cross. Again, seems so simple, so obvious. Why am I talking about it? Because it's easy to forget. Every time we get to this feast, every fall, I'm struck by the reading of the gospel. It's one of only three times a year we hear the gospel, the crucifixion, read liturgically. Obviously, Holy Week. And the other one is connected to Holy Week as we're going into Lent. The church takes us in the daily readings that we don't typically hear liturgically. We hear the accounts of the passion, the crucifixion of Christ to remind us why we're going into Lent in the first place. And then there's today, the third time. It seems like we're a little less prepared, at least I am, a little less prepared to hear about Christ being crucified without the buildup and the preparation of Lent and Holy Week. It just jars me. And it reminds me of something I need to be reminded of, and that is that the crucifixion is central to the cross. We're going to hear on Sunday that if we're going to follow Christ, the one who was crucified, then we have to deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow him. And we think about that. We think about, yes, we have to be obedient. There's lots of things that that implies. We'll talk about that on Sunday. But one of the things that we don't often think enough about is that if we take on and take up our crosses, we are offering ourselves and deciding to be crucified. No less willfully and absolutely as freely as Christ offers himself to be crucified, choosing to do so. In the same way, if we call ourselves Christians and make that reality a reality, we offer ourselves up for crucifixion. It's that central. It's so central that without doing that, let's be honest with ourselves, we're really not Christians. Well, we can put the name on, we can make the sign of the cross, we can wear a cross, but if we don't offer ourselves up for crucifixion, Brothers and sisters, we're not Christians. Now, there are ways in which we need to be crucified like Christ and in ways that are different. The one way that's different for all of us, at least so far, none of us have been asked to ascend an actual cross of wood and to have nails put through our bodies and be affixed to the cross. To this point, that hasn't happened, and in all likelihood it won't. Christ did. His crucifixion was real. The very gospel we just heard ends with, and who who bears witnesses, bears witness that his testimony is true. It actually happened. But so far, you and I are not called to that kind of crucifixion. The next kind, or the next aspect of it, is actually something Christ also had to offer up in his crucifixion, also something we are called to offer ourselves in crucifixion. 
and that is to be crucified, you might say, in our rightful place. None of us deserves to be crucified. Christ didn't deserve to be crucified, but He lowered Himself. Becoming one of us, we'll celebrate in a few months at Christmas, and then all the way to the cross, he will humble himself, giving up his rightful place of honor and glory and dignity. And that's one way that if we are going to call ourselves Christians, we have to do the same. We have to offer ourselves up and crucify in us our need for and desire to be honored, maybe not glorified, but at least honored and respected and to be treated as we should. Think about our relationships, especially our really important relationships. Marriage, our parents, our children, our close friends, and how often the really deep hurts are, you shouldn't treat me that way. Christ, in ascending the cross, didn't say, don't treat me like this, I don't deserve this. Of course he didn't deserve it. But he crucified his need to be treated as he should have been treated. Brothers and sisters, you and I need to crucify that desire within ourselves. That's the poison in the world. Yes, out in the world with all of the ugliness and all the dissension and all the conflict, but it's also the ugliness among us. Those who take the name Christians, who sign ourselves by the cross, too often say, don't treat me that way. We have to crucify that that instinct within us that's not a godly instinct. There's another way that Christ allowed himself to be crucified that we are also called to be crucified. And that is our, I would call it the modern scourge of our need for ease. We like things to be easy. And to some degree, it's understandable until we understand what it means when that ease comes in conflict with our following God. You're all here on a Friday night. I'll pat you on the back a little bit. We're not going to judge anybody who's not here because certainly there are times that we should be here and we're not and other things that we should do that we don't. So we'll pat ourselves too much. But you came because you said, no, I'm not going to stay home and do my normal Friday night thing. Especially on a rare Friday night as these fall days are still warm. We know winter's coming. So it's hard to give up that free time, that time of laying on the couch, watching whatever we normally do on a Friday night. Here we are. That's the kind of crucifixion we have to continue to look for in our lives. Finding ways that we get dependent upon our ease. When it comes to us and doesn't conflict, nothing wrong with it. Our Lord rested. But unlike us, He never let His desire for ease stop Him from doing what He was called to do. And when it came time to give up that ease that He wanted, think of His words in Gethsemane. Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He was willing to let that ease go. And in the most profound ways, of course, going to the cross. You and I have lots of good intentions. We want to pray more. We want to fast more. We want to give more. And yet when that desire to do things that are important and that are good bump up against our desire for ease, way too often we go, no, not this time. And we justify ourselves. We have to not only learn to deny ourselves, we have to put to death, we have to crucify our need for ease. Now the last way I'll mention that we need to be crucified is not something that Christ had to do. This was one thing that we're called to that he didn't need to do because he didn't love sin. You and I, if we're honest, we love our sins. Maybe not all of them. Maybe some we just 
like, but way too many of our sins we love. And we sometimes can't even imagine living without. We're devoted to some of our sins. Brothers and sisters, that desire or that commitment, that perceived need has to be crucified. We cannot lead lives that take us towards God and hold on to and cling to our sin. It doesn't work. It's the opposite. And we can't negotiate with it. We can't bargain with it. We have to crucify it. We have to reject it and say, sin is not my Savior. God is my Savior. And as hard as that calling is, that's the calling of a Christian. Because sin won't save us. Sin won't even give us the good things we think it does. We're all fooled by it. That's why we get so addicted to all those sins. We're fooled. The things we hold on to, our grudges, we think we need to hold on to, sometimes for decades, sometimes for lifetimes. Our need for what we think we need to have, that all needs to go. We need to nail it to that cross. That's the cross that we pick up. So on this day of the exaltation of the cross, we should realize the power of the cross. It is mighty. It is invincible, as we say and we'll continue to pray tonight. Absolutely true. But how is it powerful? It's powerful, that cross, because it is, because central to it is crucifixion. Without crucifixion, the cross is a branding It's a symbol. It's a logo. It's all it is. But if we can remember that the cross is the cross of crucifixion, then comes the power, the real power of the precious and life-giving and all-powerful cross. May we lift up that cross high today and hold it high every day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.